It was a video that some fans rejoiced over, while others prophesied hip-hop's doom after viewing it. As DJ Drama spun a moody, sequitive beat in the background, the 2016 XXL Freshman Cypher provided a perfect case study for a widening gap between styles within the genre. In one corner, you had Denzel Curry delivering whip-smart, multi-syllable bars that impress even the most belligerent of old heads. Elsewhere, you have the multicolored contingent of Lil Uzi Vert and Lil Yachty, while 21 Savage and Kodak Black carried the flag for understated and crime-oriented bars. Taking on a level of internet infamy that few ciphers have replicated, this short four-minute video has acquired one of two legacies. Either it captures a broad spectrum of the leaders of a generation just prior to them reaching superstar status, or the assembly of talent that XXL brought together with the exception of the lyrically adept Denzel speaks to the genre's fall from grace as it found itself entangled in the poisonous web of mumble rap. Often grouped together as a cultural ill, the concept of mumble rap dominated the hip-hop narrative for years at a time. Viewed as one subcategory of the art form by those who reveled it rather than a collection of artists all striving towards individual goals, the immediate aftermath of the cipher saw Lil Yachty take issue with the idea that they all occupied the same space instead suggesting that they had little in common with one another as they did Denzel. I feel like one reason why we all got picked as XXL 2016 freshmen, cause we all in our own lanes. I describe myself as a feel good rapper, chimed in Lil Uzi, elaborating on how he differed from the rest of the rappers in the midst. You just hear my sound and be smiling every time. It doesn't matter what I'm saying. I just make that sound good. Yachty also said he makes positive music, which is the opposite of 21 Savage. In those days, these artists were still seen as hot button issues within the hip hop news cycle, viewed as outsiders and youthful agitators rather than accepted pillars of the rap world. It took a few years for each of them, perhaps excluding Curry, to be seen as part of the status quo. In those days, they found themselves at the mercy of an insult that was masquerading as a subgenre. But where this put down used to be seen as a way to downgrade their art, many of the first wave of mumble rap artists have escaped its confines in order to become staples within a retooled hip hop world that has no other option but to accommodate them. Speaking of ham radio in March of 2017, even the freestyle's alleged savior was quick to negate the idea that there was any real difference between what hip hop artists have always done and the more vibe oriented style of today. Instead, seeing stylistic development as a necessary part of building the let's future. Let's break this down for right now. Okay. If you want to talk about hip hop right now, let's talk about hip hop back then. I'm with it. See, look. Y'all want to talk about, oh, this is not hip-hop, this is not rap, y'all doing this mumble shit, da, 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 da. But back in the day, y'all used to be like, hey, you there, <laughs> I'm at the store. Uh, I hate judge, and I love war. Like, it's, it's stupid. Yes. Like, you can't judge it. It just shows that you get older, because think about it. When we get older, we probably might be judging shit. We probably might be like, that's just the times. It's just the times, bro. Let the times be. Right. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Like, we so I want to take a quick break to thank our friends at Keeps.com. For anyone that's endured a battle with thinning or receding hair, you know that it can take an immense toll on your self-esteem. Even if it hasn't affected you as of yet, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. As it turns out, the best way to prevent that is by getting ahead of the problem. Keeps excels at doing just that, retaining the hair that you have, and in some cases, promoting growth within the 100,000 men that have put their faith in the product. And in most cases, results will begin to surface within just four to six months. Years ago, taking action against hair loss will come with the added stigma of having to go to the doctor's office, get signed off on a prescription, and agonizingly wait in line for it. Courtesy of Keeps, all of these additional stresses have been banished as this consistently five-star rated product will be delivered right to your door every three months. So, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com HHM or click the link in the description 
description to receive 50% off your first order. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Afflicted by a blanket term in its own right as a frontrunner of SoundCloud rap, Denzel realized that mumble rap had quickly grown to be a grouping that was meant to belittle a generation of MCs who placed flow and vibe over enunciation and clarity one which will gradually become completely unfit for purpose and leave only those who operated as if it was a real genre to fall into obscurity. However, it's important to note that at its core, mumble rap wasn't intended to be a critique. In fact, this classification actually spoke to a future that one Pittsburgh-based icon had actually foresaw. During an interview with Hot 97's morning show Ebro, Wiz Khalifa coined a term. We Bro. call it mumble rap. Oh, so y'all got a name for it? Yeah, me and my homies. I mean, it ain't no disrespect to the little homies, but like, they know what's up. They say they don't want to rap, you know what I mean? But it's it's cool for now. It's going to evolve, and I feel like those artists, if they want to be around, they'll, they'll figure out the next thing to do. But right now, that's what's popping. Commonly associated with melodic MCs, such as Lil Uzi, that have been upfront about their wariness about being viewed as a rapper, the idea of hip-hop moving to a post-lyrical space is something that conjured up a lot of hostility within hip-hop. Duping even culturally important artists such as Flatbush Zombies and their Beast Coast peers into rallying against it at every turn, mumble rap was something that the embittered and displaced could point to and say, that's wrong with this generation. Much like how Jay-Z had strived to combat the onset of the singing era on the Blueprint 3's Death of Autotune, the concept of what mumble rap was continued to expand beyond all reason and soon allowed for a turf war to open up. Prompting Lil Yachty to feud against old heads, such as the legendary Pete Rock and Joe Budden, while Lil Uzi reaffirmed to young rappers that the old must die, the battle for hip hop's future strayed further and further away from that initial 2016 XXL freestyle. As Eminem and Snoop Dogg parried modern flows before Kodak rescinded T.I.'s offer of inclusion in the Trap Museum, the culture of us versus them was very real even if the apparent new style was actually the product of separate entities all experimenting with their individual sounds. Yet, where Hove had once attempted to draw a line in the sand between hip hop and what he saw as a pollutant, one of its own Rock Nation signees contested the idea that the new generation should be bound by this oppressive, short sighted grouping. Dubbing his underrated 2017 project Mumble Rap, the Toronto MC explained that the album title was used to help stem the flow of negativity. I felt like the term was so disrespectful because I love everything that the young generation is doing right now. I think they're doing incredible things for music and culture, the dress code, everything is coming from their generation. So for us to downplay them and call them mumble rappers is like kind of whack to me. Rap is supposed to change, it's supposed to do new things, and that was my way of taking the word back. Among the rappers to profit from the first wave of mumble rap, Ugly God, who'd garnered both praise and uproar with the success of Water, detailed the mood within the supposed camp, and it's one that mirrored Belly's outlook. It's just a kind of a disrespect word called mumble rap, right. when you got really actually understand what they're saying. Right. Like, I, I like using Yachty as an example, that's my a homie of mine. Yeah. And they'll talk so much stuff about his music, and then when he'll drop, he'll drop some more music, and they'll talk shit about that. And what doesn't make sense to me, if you feel like he's trash, why would you listen to it, something else he dropped? Right. If you hate it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even pay any mind or even pay attention to him or drop it. But instead, they want a reaction. And they're secretly fans. Right. Like, they get him on, like, they'll get him or Uzi on interviews just to talk or embarrass him. Right. But at the end of the day, you pay him to be on the interview and right. you bought his flight. Yet... While more opportunistic hopefuls took the styles of artists such as 21 Savage and Playboy Cardi as something to copy as a blueprint for success, it enabled mumble rap's critics to look at it as a real movement rather than a simple case of one person's good idea being increasingly poorly executed. As speculation around mumble rap's apparent death began to pick up around 2018, the names that were synonymous with its first wave have either surpassed its negative implications or faded away into insignificance as the more vital among them continue to expand what trap beat infused music could accomplish. Now, the prevalence of mumble rap has diminished for two reasons. 
Not only did the mainstream consumer get accustomed to the more off-kilter flows and lyrical minimalism as an accepted part of hip-hop and no longer required separation, but at the same time, just like any cultural moment from auto-crooning to the shiny suit era and the No Limit Invasion at the mid-90s where the Louisiana label churned out 23 projects in one year, there reaches a point of oversaturation where simply sticking to the template isn't enough. In the boom period, new artists become indistinguishable from the ones before as labels hurriedly snatched up every new signee that fits the bill for success. Varying from Lil Xan's three album one million deal to the eight million that Lil Pump acquired, a lot of money was spent by record labels that misguidedly saw mumble rap in its more uninventive form as the pathway to any long spells of relevancy. Once this tipping point is breached, the wave begins to taper off and allows for individual stars that break the mold to flourish. And as we now know from the steady stream of falloffs, simply mimicking the style that Future had begun to lay out in the early 2010s was no longer enough. As a result, making mumble rap what it is today. A batch of all style, no substance artists that refuse to go beyond the bare minimum and rely on social media antics to compensate for their dwindling pull. Beyond that, an outmoded term that was used to try to loosely define hip hop's new breed of innovators as they move towards more impressionist and expressionist styles. As beautifully summarized by 21 Savage during a 2017 interview with Rolling Stone, he said this, nobody who they say is mumble rap mumbles. They don't understand my slang or my accent. They don't know how to categorize it because it's art. They're trying to bring it down. As hip hop continues to evolve and reshape itself at a rapid rate, mumble rap is no longer a term that harbors any shred of validity to it. And by the same token, pledging your undenying hatred for it as a subgenre now feels utterly redundant and embarrassing in its own right. As time separated who had talent from those that capitalized on a moment in time where skills seemed to matter less than meeting a simple criteria, the applicable traits of what was thought to be mumble rap were taken and rehosted into more artistically fleshed out music by those with the ability to do so. In essence, this is what separates a little baby from an icy narco. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, all of the controversy that surrounded the alleged rise of mumble rap was an evolutionary sidestep that's led to a more diverse and engaging future where lyrical crews such as Griselda can coexist with a world where quality controls roster still packs out the billboard chart on a regular basis. As a result, offering fans more choices as opposed to the apparent death of hip hop as we knew it. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date with everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.